sovereign U.S. airspace. You know, Alaska is is one of the 50 states. There's a, it had already, you know, penetrated U.S. airspace. Uh, there's certainly discussions. You know, the Pentagon always presents options to the president. They certainly had this on the books. Uh, there are F-22s based in Alaska. They certainly had enough firepower to do it then. A decision was made to hold fire. You know, part of the decision uh, possibly was to just track this a spy balloon to see where over the United States it was going to go, but there's no question uh, here at the White House that political pressure, uh, particularly from Republicans, to do something about that, about this spy balloon, not let it just loiter and, and you know, zigzag around the United States. It mm -hmm. needed to be shot down, shot needed to be taken. The only question now, Mike, is the weight. Remember, this is the weight of about three school buses coming down in the ocean. So this thing is not likely going to be floating. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so that is going to be the big race is when it lands, Will the U.S. military or any kind of salvage vessel get there in time to grab this thing? And, of course, this is not the first time the Chinese have spied on the U.S. and vice versa. Remember, just over a month ago, a Chinese fighter jet came within 10 feet of an American spy plane in the South China Sea. Back in 2016, the Chinese, uh, the, the Pentagon accused the Chinese of stealing an underwater drone from the U.S. Navy. And, of course, dating all the way back to 2001, remember that EP-3 during the Bush administration uh, collided yep. with a Chinese fighter jet yet the crew held for 11 days. So this is just the latest chapter of espionage between the United States and China, Mike.